seated. Yes, go ahead. I've done so many wrong things, and I never thought I had so many friends in my life. And God, because of God, I let him back into my life. And it was the best thing I could have ever done because he has blessed me in so many ways that I can't even count anymore. Yeah. And I want to thank you. Church family. <coughs> oh, thank God. Yeah. Yeah, thank him. Well, so that's what I'm hearing right now. Is there anyone else for, with the testimony? I'm still working on him. <laughs> I like that testimony. He's still working. Yeah. Still work. He started. Yeah, awesome. Like Satan tries to creep in and steal my joy and make. Oh, maybe you want to do old familiar things mm -hmm. that you know, or you don't want to do, and yeah. just going to lead you back to the same misery you were at. And you know, people get put in your path. That my sister-in-law, she just she loves to destroy me. I don't know why. I've never done anything to her, but like she tries to tear down every good thing. Mm -hmm. So I've just had to distance myself and. But we find, yeah, but we find but God is faithful. He is very faithful. But, you know, when things like that happen, Satan uses it as a wonderful opportunity to start doing that self-talk in your head again. And, mm. well, maybe you're not worthy. Maybe you're, you know. Mm. And then I just constantly have to keep combating it with, you know. When I wake up and think, ugh, another day, I say, no, this is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Yeah. I have to keep constantly. But someday Satan is just so relentless. I crushed a Pepsi can yesterday. I hate you, Satan. You know, just... Well, um, and that's why we get together as a church. We get together as church to be able to encourage you. This, this is the day. This is the day we don't kick each other while we're down and, and point out our faults. Well, you screwed up last week. You did this that way. You spoke that way. No, we come together to heal our wounds and, and, to, and to encourage each other and say, you know, yeah, you might have made that mistake. You might have made that bad choice. But let me pray for you. Let me put God's Word into you. Let me get the wound healed so we can get back up and go back out into that world because you know again what we we forget is there's others watching us they're watching our lives you know and their salvation is hinging on that testimony yes we're going to blow it we're not going to have perfect lives but it's the idea that as we go through life we keep looking to Jesus he's our example I'm not the example I'll screw up just like everybody else does he's the example so if we can continually come here every every Sunday and encourage us each other and say, hey, look to Jesus, look to Jesus, look to Jesus. And that's where when I said uh, last night, like, you know, we had soccer tournaments that weekend, then we had the mountains the next weekend mm -hmm. and I missed church. And then I was sick last yeah. week, I'm like, I really need to be a church. Yeah, life, life, can, life can take over you really quickly. Three weeks, life yeah. can start with yeah, sure enough. And that's, that's kind of why we're, um, this ser series, uh, th today's sermon is called, Did You Hear That? And it's really going to get, in fact, hopefully nobody wore their steel-toed boots today, you know, because I think the Holy Spirit's going to come down with a hammer and He's going to just really pound our toes today, uh, you know, because here's some of the things that I, I, I love to preach God's goodness. I love to preach about how He gives and gives and gives and gives. But see, then I would be telling you a lie and leading you in the wrong direction on who God really is. You know, because God is a jealous God. But He's also a God of power. He's also a God that if things are not going His way, He will get involved. And He will change things around. Because His purpose is that others will see Him as a good God and follow Him in salvation. So in that, we're going to look at um, we're going to look at a scripture, well, many scriptures today, and we're going to do a story on Jonah. If you have your Bibles or your apps, and by the way, those that are watching online, thank you for coming and uh, checking us out. So if you'll just turn your Bibles or your Bible apps to Jonah chapter one, Jonah chapter one, and uh, we're going to start off with this read here on uh, verse one, Jonah, Jonah chapter one. The word of the Lord came to Jonah son of Amittai, go to the great city of Nineveh 
and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. A lot of times we have a problem. We want to put God in this category and in, 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 in this that there's a lot of bad things that are happening in, in life around us. And it's sin. And sometimes when God speaks to us, and, and it, it kind of takes me back some years, that God will speak to us, and then we'll kind of do this. Haley, did you hear that? God is telling, He's trying to say something into your life. I want you to do something. I need you to change something in your life. And we look around and we say, did you hear that? Even talking to ourselves. Did you hear that? Yeah. Because this sermon really takes me back to back in 2000, I think it was uh, 5, when I was sitting in a church and there was this big missionary push, you know, of they were going, that they were trying to get people to go to um, uh, uh, short term mission trips. But in all of that, there were still the people, just the altar was full of people. Some were getting saved, some were committing to mission trips, some were committing to like helping out at the church itself, you know, with children's church or, or, or you know, Sunday school or things like that. You know, it, it just the, the presence of God was there. And I was sitting back comfortable in what I was doing for God. At that time, I was helping in children's church. I was, helped to, I was uh, considered as the, the storyteller in the program. I would tell you know, the, the, the stories of the Bible to the little children you know, so that they would understand what has to do with their lives. And then I was driving a bus ministry, you know, and I was hauling 30 to 40 some kids on the bus. You know, and then I had uh, foster kids in my home. And, and then I also had a Sunday school class for teenagers I was doing. So I was comfortable at where I was in serving God and thought I was doing what God had me to do and I was happy I was just sitting back and saying wow this is so cool watching the move of God and all of a sudden I hear this small still voice maybe you've heard me say that once before you know when somebody loves you they always talk to you in a soft voice they whisper into your ear but if you hear somebody yelling at you hey 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 go ahead you know that just isn't God because that's not love Love is always talking to you in a small, still voice. And that's what I was hearing. I was hearing this voice. I'm calling you to preach. I about fell out in my pew laughing so hard. Yeah, right. That's, is that you, God? That's exa- I was, I'm glad nobody was around me because everybody was at the altar. But I was there by myself having this little thing thing in my, you know, with my, in my head and, and by myself. You know? and it was just like, you know, is that you, God? You're kidding me. No way. You can't call me to be a preacher. There's no way. All right, let's start off with my excuses, okay? How many of you ever done that? You sat there, you think you know you're hearing God? You know, and he's speaking to you that he wants you to do something, you know, and all of a sudden you come off with right away with the excuses. I'm too young. I'm too busy. I got this going on. I got that. Here are my excuses. Are you kidding me, God? The Bible says that you should only be a a, a preacher is to be a man with one wife. According to the culture of the religious culture here in the, in the Bible Belt in the South is that if you've been married twice, you consider that you have two wives. So I'm just like, you know, I can't have it because I've had two wives. You know, I got, I, you know, I got a wife and I have an ex-wife, you know, so I can't be a preacher because that's what the people here say. And God says, that's not what I said. I'm like, okay, 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 whatever, whatever. All right, here's the other thing that they say. The religious leaders and the preachers and the, and the, the, the like deacons and things like that, this is another thing that they say. They say that you've got to have, um, you got to go to school and have a piece of paper saying that you have enough education to be a preacher. I have no education. All I know is the Bible and I've been reading it, you know, as long as I can, as much as I can, and I know all the stories, but I do not have no piece of paper saying I could be a preacher. He's like, okay, I hear what you're saying. I said, well, I'll tell you what. If I'm going to be a preacher, you're going to have to prove it to me. So, in that, I'm going to do my part to take the challenge that you're saying you're calling me to be a preacher, and I'm going to try to find a way to go to school. 
and get this education that man wants to look at that you're, you, God, are calling me. And listen, that's what a lot of the problem is, is that we're focused on what everybody else is saying instead of what God is saying. And that's, that's it. most of our problems in life is that we need to quit viewing and hearing what they're saying and view and hear what God is saying. Because the salvation of others depends on what God is telling you to do. We need to get out of our little scared little boats and our little selves and take a bold step of faith and hear what He's saying and take that step and do what He's asking, asking us to do. So in that, my first step was that I started, I went online, started looking for colleges. But here's the thing. I, I, was, I, was, I had the responsibility of seven kids. I could not leave my job and go do that. I, I would be dishonoring my family because the Bible says if you don't take care of your family, you're, you're dirt. It really, that's just the, the terms that I'm going to use that the Bible is saying. You're dirt. So my responsibility was to take, take care of them. So I'm like, okay God, you're going to have to prove this. So all of a sudden I come across this college that you can do it online. But also there was another thing in saying, well, if you don't have time to do it online, what we can do is we can send you a CD-ROM of the teacher doing his class and you can watch that. So I invested in a, in a computer, got the CD-ROM, paid for the class. Oh, oh, here's the other thing that God proved that it was paying for the class. He, pay, he paid for three quarters of the, the payment. I got a scholarship from that school uh, uh, for paying over three quarters of the payment. I only pay, I don't, I don't pay just a, a little bit. God paid for it. And I, so I'm, I'm, I, I got the CD-ROM and everything. I'm like, all right, when am I going to have time to, to, to listen to this? Oh, I got a job that was making me travel an hour and a half from, from Kannapolis to Spartanburg. Hour and a half to the job, hour and a half back. I get in the truck, plug my computer into the charger, plug my earphones in there, my buddy sat beside me, I push play, put it in drive, I got an hour and a half uh, teaching on the way there, an hour and a half teaching on the way back. I got three hours of school every day and I got paid for it! <laughs> How cool is that when you start following God, He also provides needs and, and takes care of you in that. So it's the idea of taking our eyes off of, of the scary things and looking to God at what He's trying to, trying to do. He's trying to do something in our lives. Let's read on. Verse 3 says, But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed to Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for, the, for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and, and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. You know, I think we might look at a lot of things in our lives and we hear God and this is what we do. We play it off. We play it off. I'm going to find something else to do. I'm going to, get my, I'm going to get involved in some other job. I'm going to get involved in some other activities. We play it off. We go and do, and we just, we, we play this mind game with ourselves to not hear God and what He's telling us to do. You know what that is? That is open and outright rebellion. And that hurts God's feelings. If you're a parent, Maybe someday you'll be a parent. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Your child outright rebelling hurts like a knife stabbing you in the heart. It hurts. Now, as a parent, imagine that God feels the same way. Because He made us in His image. So if we feel that way, how much more He feels that? We play it off. It's just absolutely. I mean, because I, I was trying to play it off, but my heart's intent was really, I wanted to be obedient to God. I really did. So I made the excuses up, but I still took the step of faith to try to more or less prove to God it was impossible to happen. You know? Watch God. I'm going to go online look for a college and ain't nothing going to fit what I need. Maybe God's calling you to do something and you're making the excuses and you're, you're on your way to Joppa and you're ready to get on the boat you know, and, and, and take off. 
God's right now, He's saying, er, you better change your mind. We're going to find out here in a second. Let's read verse 17. Let's jump up in a little bit. Before we read 17, here's what happens. Jonah gets on the ship. He goes straight down there to the bow of the ship and he lays down and he takes a nap and he goes into a deep sleep. How many of you ever think when things are going bad or things are not going your way, the first thing you want to do is head to the bed, crawl in there, pull the covers over and go to sleep? Yes, yes. I have a lot of hands raised out there on the camera. I know that. Yeah. It, 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 is, it is something in our nature that is that the only... Other than doing the things that a lot of the world does, go get drunk, go get high, go do something, to hide from that what you've got to face. And the best one is sleep. It is the best way to hide from what God is or whatever's facing you. I'm just going to crawl in, pull the covers over my head, and go to sleep. And so he does that. And all of a sudden, a storm comes, and, and, and all the people are freaking out. They're calling out to their gods and throwing stuff overboard, trying to say they're going to die. They're thinking about this. And they're all, all of a sudden, everybody's like, hey, where's that other dude that got on here? He ain't even know we're on here fretting or nothing. He's, he's, not, he's not freaking out like us. And the, one, and the captain goes, he's down, he's down in the bow. Go get him. And so they go get him and wake him up and say, hey man, pray to your God and tell him, you know, to help us out. We need help. We're going to die here. And he's like, you know, hey, you know why all this bad stuff has happened? is because of me. And all of them stop for a second to hear what he's got to say. For you, why are you, what do you have to do with this storm? And he goes to tell him, well, my God who is the living God, Jehovah, he, he has called me to do something and I'm running from Him. So He's trying to stop me. So the only way this storm is going to happen is if, is if you throw me overboard. Take a second and look in your life right now or look at the people that are in your life right now. Is there a, a hellacious storm happening in your life? Is it because of you? Or is it because of somebody that's in your life that's running from God and you guys are paying the consequences or they're paying the consequences because somebody's choosing to run from God? This is the reality of who God is. Yes, God is a God of love. Yes, God is a God of grace, unmerited favor. He is a God of mercy. But He is a God who is going to chase you and allow, and even Him Himself will bring the storms to get you back to Him. This is something that a lot of times preachers, or even myself, I do not like to preach this way. But it is the idea of saying, what is good for you is for you to quit running and for you to sit down and say, okay God, I surrender. The people in my life are suffering because of my choice. They're hurting because of me. The storm is here because of me. They're losing money because of me. They're in financial disarray because of me. My choice to run from you, God. Jonah says, verse 17, Now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the well three days and three nights. The men heard what Jonah said. Jonah said, the only way the storm's going to stop, stop is throw me overboard. And when they did that, God provided a fish. Again, this is about God. This is about God in the storm. This is about God chasing you that others will get saved. What are you doing against God that you need to surrender and say, throw me overboard? Because again, God will provide your safety. He provides a safety, a safety net. Here, He gets a fish. Jonah could have, in a storm, he could have just died. But that's not what God wanted. You could have just died. Remember that car wreck? Or remember that something, something happened in your life? You could have died. I got stories after stories when I wasn't living right. 
There was a time that I was, I was up in Asheboro. You know, some of you have heard this story. And I was pumping my gas, and it was, you know, 6 o'clock in the morning, and I'm right down the street from the job. I was like, doo, 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 you know, okay, okay, I'm going in there. I pay for my gas, you know, and as I was coming out, I was like, oh, man, I'm so hungry. And I never ate anything that back then. I just love coffee and drink a lot of coffee because I like to go fast. I like to get a lot of things done and get it done quickly. And all of a sudden, I turned back around to go back into the store to, to, to get some Little Debbie's and some more coffee. I heard this screeching tires and a crash. And I turned around, and this 69 white knight had been backed up straight into the gas pumps right where I was standing pumping. The gas would have, the pumps would have fell down right on me. All of a sudden, boom, a flame of fire came right up out of the, out of the, the pumps hit the ceiling of the, of the overhang and was rolling out. The, I mean, this flame was humongous. And my truck burnt down to the ground. The ladder racks got so hot they melted and folded down onto the truck. I was standing there. It could have been me because I was on my way out to my truck. Same job I was going to. We finished it up. We're standing out there. I had my hand on the, on the door, you know, and all of a sudden hearing this thundering and saw the lightning. I said, come on, guys. Get her wrapped up. Get everything strapped down. We got to go. The storm is coming. And I was giving the other guy directions for tomorrow's job, you know, and all of a sudden I heard this crack. And next thing I know, I was laying down on the ground. A bolt of lightning had hit my truck. My feet were on the ground, so it made me grounded. And went through the truck into me and knocked me down. Then there was the time that this lady that I was with decides she wants to look me dead in the eyes and tell me she's going to kill me. And meant it. And then there was the time I was driving down the road and I had worked so much, I was so tired, I just fell asleep. Woke up like this. <laughs> I was looking around, I was in a ditch. Corn, road, corn. Looked around, turned the car off, laid back down, went back to sleep. <laughs> Things were trying to get my attention. God was saying, hey, I love you. I, I miss a relationship with you. I need you. I want you to come back to me. There is things happening in your life that means to steal and kill and destroy your life. But this is me trying to get your attention that I have a purpose for you, a calling for you. I have something for you to do. And we're blowing it off. Oh, it's just a coincidence. Or it's this. Or I'm just outright rebelling because I don't want to do it because I'm scared. I'm scared what's going to happen. I'm scared what people are going to say about me. That's the biggest thing. I don't care if you're a teenager or an adult. We're afraid of what people are going to say about us. But it shouldn't matter because one day you're not going to face them. You're going to face God Almighty. And He's going to look at you and He says, You know what? You, you did accept my son as for salvation. But you, you were just so rebellious that I had things for you to do and you didn't do it. I'm disappointed. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. I want to hear that. I love to hear that. So what is it that is eating you up? What is it that has got you? That you're, you're rebelling. You're, you're, God has spoken to you. And you're just not doing it. In fact, you're running. You're running the wrong way. For Jonah, it was, it was the whale who had it. See, a lot of times when things happen in our lives, there is times when bad stuff happens in our lives that it is not God. It is evil. It is evil that is trying to destroy and kill us. But see, in all of that, those times, people automatically blame God. Everything bad happens, everybody blames God. 
Well, I'm going to tell you what. If you're going to blame God, then look at yourself and ask you, are you being disobedient to God for you to, to, to blame Him? But if you're not being disobedient to God, then quit blaming Him because God is a good God. We forget we live in a cursed world. We forget that there's an evil one and His realm is out there to steal, kill, and destroy our lives. To ruin our testimony that Jesus Christ is good and died for our sins. But if you're openly rebelling against God and you want to blame God, He's a big God and He can take it. But you better make sure you blame Him straight out. Because He will, He will love you no matter what, wherever you're at. He's a big God. See, Jonah saw that while he was in the belly. He prays this prayer. It says, From inside the, from in, inside the finished Jonah, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, In my distress I call to you, to the Lord. And he answered me from deep in the realm of the dead. I called for help. And you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the sea. And the current swirled around me. Can you, can you kind of imagine that? Being inside the fish, you know? And, you know, and you're feeling that... I don't know. I'm, I can never imagine even being in the stomach of anything. You know? Ugh. You know? As it swirled around, about me, all your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I've been banished from your sight, yet... I will look again towards your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barreled me in, in forever. But you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered You, Lord. My prayer rose to You, to Your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. For them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sanctify, sacrifice to You what I have vowed, I will make good. I will say salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Jonah in the depths of the belly, still in his rebellion, said, God is my hope. Whether I die in this fish, I'm still going to look to the temple he knew in his mind that he had direction. He's looking to where direction was to the temple. That's where he would find God. For us, it's to the cross. Even in the misery of what's happening right now, the message Jonah wants to give to us is look to Jesus. You may be in the depths of running or you may be involved because of somebody else's rebellion. It's for you to look to Jesus. He is our hope. He is our only hope. So to get out of this mess is to turn to Him. Give Him honor and glory and praise. And, t and just repent. You know what repent means? Repent means change your mind. Change your mind of what you're thinking about the direction you're going and turn away from it and go back to God. Verse 3 says, in um, Jonah chapter 3 verse 3 says, The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. There it is. God is a God of second chances. For many of you that you have been running from Him, it's a second chance. 
This is the Word. Today is the Word. It's the second chance. Now go and do what I asked. Put down all the shame, all the sorrow, all the things that people condemned you of. Put it all down. Step out away from it and go. And do what He has asked you to do. Jonah did that. He went to Nineveh and he, he preached. Nineveh was so big it took him three days to get across it, to preach it. And so he preached it, told him, listen, you got 40 days. God's going to come and destroy this land. See, this is a word really that needs to come across America. Because when I, I, I have at one time in my life read through Revelations read some other scriptures, Ezekiel and things like that that have to do with revelations. And it's a subject I really don't want to talk about, but you know what? It's like this. You're in your house and you look out your window because some light is flickering and you look at your neighbor and the neighbor's house is on fire. But you don't want to be rude and go over there because you know it's nighttime and they're sleeping and you don't want to wake them up out of their sleep. You know? But it's the idea, well, if I don't go over there, they're going to die. So what do I do? Hey, I don't mean to be um, disrespectful or anything or rude to you, you know, but your house is on fire. No! It's the idea of going over there going, wake up, wake up! Try to kick in the door because why? They're going to die. And all the signs that the Bible has given us through Revelations, through Matthews, even Jesus gave us the signs. A lot of earthquakes. A lot of wars that, you know, that are going to be talked about. There's wars everywhere. Volcanoes coming up all over the place. And, you know, there's all these things happening. You know, and it's the idea of saying, Woo! Wake up! It is time to turn back to God. It is time to look at Him and say, I'm going to stop rebelling. I need Jesus as my Savior. I need God back in my life. I need to go because if I don't, the people around me, they're going to die and go to hell because Jesus is going to come and I'm going up with Him no matter what. You know, a lot of saints are really big on repeating, you know, preaching on that, but what about the people that are left here behind? Get out of our little click, click, little churchy groups and look at the people around us. If you go, are they coming with you? If not, we should be busting down the doors trying to drag them out of the fires of hell and get them to come with us. And it's a way of doing it in love. This way of love was Jonah walking through there saying, y'all going to die in 40 days. God's mad at you guys sinning. You know what? If you're going to die in 40 days, God's mad at you sinning. You need to stop sinning. Repent. Repent. Turn from your sins. 40 days, God's going to bring judgment. We can do this. But how do we do it in a way of loving our loved ones and say, listen, time is short. Let alone you could be driving down the road and somebody be texting and all of a sudden cross the line and take you out and you die today. Or you die of a heart attack. Or you die because of of your, your health, cancer, things like that. We're not guaranteed a tomorrow. We're not even guaranteed the rest of today. So just as this message was so important back then, it is very important today. God is speaking. Are we blowing Him off? Or are we going to do? Jonah 3.10 says, And when God saw that they did how they did what they did and how they turned from their evil ways he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened see the people heard what Jonah had to say and they changed their mind and said you know what the king declared over the land listen we're not going to we're going to fast and we're going to pray and and even the animals don't feed no animals and we're going to ask God to change his mind Check that out. There are several times in the Bible where people did things in their lives to change God's mind from bringing down the judgment. Could you imagine? Judgment is on its way to here, to America. But if people would start praying and interceding for the lost, that God would pull it back, rein it in, change His mind and not bring it? 
It's a thought because I see it coming. But I also see a move of God through people that are praying and asking God to bring salvation to a lot of people. That's why so many of these churches around, they're, they're booming, man. They're, 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 they're hitting a lot. They can't, God gave them an idea and they're running with it. One church in South Carolina, I think they got like eight campuses. They're, they're already up to like 39,000 people they're reaching for, for South Carolina. Their goal is 100,000 people they're going to try to reach. Last year alone, I'm thinking that like they baptized like 10,000 people last year. They ain't playing around. It's the idea is that they got it in their mind and they know it that God is coming back, sending Jesus back, and if they don't go out and reach the lost, they're going to be lost and going to burn in hell forever, and they don't want that. Is that our heart's desire too? Taking it off of ourselves and woe me, poor me, and I don't like those people, so I'm going to deal with those people. I don't like the way they look, you know, they're drug addicts or they're homeless or they're, they smell or they're, they, they, you know, they just, they're thieves, you know, or they're, it, it's, it's the idea of looking at them and say, saying those things, I don't want nothing to do with them. Those people are going to die and go to hell if you don't step up and do something about it. Circumstances can change. In Jonah 4, verse 4, it says, But to Jonah, this seemed very wrong, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord, Isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? That, that is what I tried to foretell by, fe- by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. There's the true God. That's the God I want to share with you. I want to share this God who is slow to anger, abounding in love. But it's the idea, if you're rebelling from God, I want Him to chase you down and hunt you down like the hounds of, of what is that movie? Was it the, Baskerville, yeah. Arr, you know? I, it's the idea of saying that, that God has a plan to save many lives. And you're part of the plan. You're part of the plan. So getting some cards and inviting people to church, that's a start. Maybe you're kind of, you know, kind of shy or things, you know, like that, you know, and you don't really know how to tell somebody about Jesus. Well, that's the idea of saying, you know what, invite them to church or invite them to watch online. To put to plant the seed because if, if you, God has given me the gift, He's called me, I'll help you. Get them to watch online. And as they watch online, the gospel will be planted in their lives. Because it's the understanding that if they don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and they pass away, they will go to a place called hell and eternity away from God. That is not what God wants. God saved Tarshish. He saved Nineveh because He cared. He knew they were all sinners and they were all bad. He wanted to save them. That's why He sent a word to them. Stop doing wrong. Stop. See, Jesus and God looked down upon us and said, Man, them guys are they're nasty. They're such sinners. You think we just ought to just let them all die in what they're doing, you know? We we'll wipe them out like we did with Noah. And they both looked at each other and went, Nah! And Jesus came to earth, was born from a virgin, grew up a man, did not sin, and then laid down his life. He gave the ultimate price. See, God still, again, God had to bring something bad on His own Son so that good would come out of it. So do you think in your rebellion that God's going to withhold any bad from you? I don't think so. 
Because he sees a lot of people that are going to get saved when God brings his wrath. He let his own wrath come out on his own son. What thinks what makes you think he's going to hold it from us? Did you hear that? Shh. Did you hear that? Is that what you look like? Huh? When God's speaking to you? Did you hear that? I'm telling you. Take it serious what God is trying to speak to you. Get some instructions on what you're supposed to do. Take a step of faith and watch God show up and show off His power. Inspire heads. First off, it starts off with knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you don't know Him as your Lord and Savior, today is the day of salvation. And He's calling to you saying, change your mind in the direction you're going. I want to save your soul that I can have a relationship with you. And in that, all you have to do is just, the Bible says, just ask for Him to save you, for the Holy Spirit to fill you, and you will be saved. Then tell somebody that you got saved. But those that are followers of Jesus Christ, like Jonah, God has spoken something in your life and you've been, you've been running from Him on it. Today's the second chance. He's spitting you out on the land. He's getting you out of that trouble. And He's saying, Go. Go. As we pray, will you accept? Will you go? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just come to You in the precious holy name of Jesus. We give You honor and glory and praise and we thank You that You are the same God then that You are now and You will be in the future. That You are a God of love. You are a God of, of mercy and grace and slow to anger. But You are a God who has His mindset to save many and that You will come and You will deal with us personally. And we love You for that. That You care that much just for us. You care that much for others too. So we ask in Jesus' name, Will you speak clear? Holy Spirit, will you just, just overwhelm us with the same thought of, uh, and, and words that you're calling us to do? Give us boldness and courage to do. We give you honor and glory and praise. In the precious holy name of Jesus, may your word go forth now and accomplish the things we are into it is sent right now. In Jesus' name, Amen.